Hi, I'm here with Ron Perriello and Ray Felix. Tonight we have Tom Siaka, a uh, legend in the comic book field, as our special guest. for joining us thank you legend in my own mind but in any case hi guys hey, how's it going tom oh hello from the bronx well, well hi ray it's nice to see you wow all the way in the bronx eh? Mm -hmm. okay yeah. pretty much uh, city right next to each other right see yes you, exactly right. but that's okay <laughs> you ruined the illusion <laughs> right, you're you're right uh, the screen i'm ruining okay. the illusion of tv kids mm -hmm. don't believe that's anything fine. you see on tv kids i just want to tell you yeah, that's right. actually Ray's twin over there. Exactly, exactly. So anyhow, so uh, so here we are. So shoot some questions, guys, because we're waiting yeah. for pizza. Right. <laughs> so um, how did you get your start in the industry? How did I get my start in the industry? Well, actually, uh, uh, actually started when I was uh, in grammar school. Believe it or not. Um, I uh, it was a big comic book fan, uh, obviously. Uh, but by I guess sixth grade, I switched from DC to Marvel because uh, it was Marvel reading the Marvel comics. They're kind of like in the real world because Spider Man was in in uh, uh, Forest Hills. He was in Queens. You know, everyone else was in New York City. I mean. So there was like a semblance of reality there, whereas, you know, Superman, Batman, and they had all these like goofy things uh, going on. If you look at the, the two books, uh, the two, two companies in the 60s, it's like DC is kind of like, like its own universe. And it's kind of like goofy and, and Marvel's the real world. But anyhow, so, uh, so I was like, uh, you know, reading the Fantastic Four or whatever. You know, and I said, let me go send some sketches to Stan Lee. I got some ideas. So, so one of the things I did was, uh, um, uh, and my friend Ray Tessie, who is uh, um, online, he's got the, uh, he's involved with the Star Trek Continues, the, uh, the fan production there. But he remembers, I drew a character called Bugman. And he was like this like, giant insect guy, like, you know, whatever. I sent it to Stan, and then Stan sends me, which I, unfortunately I don't have the, the, the note anymore. It probably worth like hundreds of dollars. So, well, thanks for your you know, for stuff. It was a great idea. And then he, then there's, I think it's issue 24 or something. They got the, the infant terrible. And it's like bug looking creature on the cover of Fantastic Four. Right? Wow. And it's like, oh shit, it's, it's bug man. So he, he, the basic, you know, idea you know the, of the look you know, he probably showed it to jack and said yeah i could do something with this you know and he made this you know this kind of like bug looking guy so, so that was like my first really you know connection it's like wow i said something and they, and they used it like oh you know but then later on um what is 1968 was the i think it was the first or second um phil Suling used to do these comic cons in new york uh, he was the, really the, the guy that invented the Comic Con. It was called the New York Comic Art Convention. This is it, the second annual Mighty Marvel Convention on, on April 23rd, 24th, and 25th in New York City. This is Stan Lee talking, and you are there. Now I'll shut up and give you a chance to see what was happening. We start off with me signing autographs after making a speech. Here we go. And it was uh, always over the July 4th weekend. So in 1968, I'd go with my dad. It was the Statler Hilton, which is now, uh, is it the Statler Hilton? No, it's not the Statler Hilton. That was the, um, um, it's across from Madison Square Garden. 
Uh, Penn, Pla Penn, State, Penn Plaza. I think it's Penn Plaza, whatever Penn Plaza, it is now. Pennsylvania Hotel. Pennsylvania Hotel. No. Pennsylvania. Originally, it was called the Statler Hilton at that time. And uh, so it was, uh, it was a big convention. So I went with my father. And uh, uh, my father, if you can imagine, uh, Groucho Marx, that was my father. Because my father, they used to call him Groucho because he kind of looked like Groucho Marx and he had a cigar and everything. So that's, that's my dad. So we go, we go in there and so they had all the, uh, at that time, the artists were hanging out and people getting like free sketches. It's like, so it's like uh, Jim Steranko was there and he did a sketch for me. And actually he, I'm friends with him to this day. Um, yeah, maybe uh, you should explain who Jim Steranko is. Oh, Jim Steranko. It's the pizza guy. <laughs> Okay, so so okay, so we're at the Statler Hilton, Statler Hilton in New York City, July Fourth weekend, nineteen sixty eight. I'm there with my dad, also named Tom Siaka, mm -hmm. who looks like Groucho Marx, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and uh, and so it's a comic convention. It's the first or second actual real comic convention ever held, and uh, there were probably like three thousand people there, but they had a couple. It was a dealer's room, and they had uh, um, some, uh, you know, uh, places for discussions, uh, panels, whatever. And I met, um, I met the um, Jim Steranko, of course, of uh, Marvel's Agents of Shield, uh, and he did. He's done Captain America. He's still active today. Uh, I'm still friends with him today. I actually worked for him. I, I did some writing for. When he was publishing his magazine, the media scene, and I uh, helped him out on that in the uh, the eighties. Um, <clears throat> but uh, he did a, a, There were all the artists were doing free sketches. Now now it's like one hundred and fifty dollars. But they were doing sketches for all the kids that lined up. So you know he did like a little Nick Fury sketch for me, and then uh, um, Jack Kirby was there doing sketches. But there were like so many people around him. You know, I I was uh, like you know I was like. Like stunned, like wow, all these people, Jack Kirby, like, but the Bill Everett was there, who also a Golden Age artist, and he did a, a Submariner sketch for me, which is somewhere in my my files. I don't know where it is, but it's somewhere. Uh, Joe Orlando did a, a little quick sketch. Joe Orlando, who worked for EC and was a uh, editor at DC, who I also ended up you know, working with. Uh, later on, um, and um, my biggest memory from that particular show <clears throat> was um, that Phil Sullivan was selling a copy of Superman number one, <clears throat> which probably would be like a 7.0 today for a hundred dollars. I said, Dad, buy this. Oh, this is great. Superman number one. They go, well, Are you kidding? A hundred dollars for a comic book? What are you crazy? You know? <laughs> so it's like uh, and now now it goes for like a million dollars or something, but you know. Yeah, a million wow. dollars. Dad in heaven, you're an idiot. But that's besides the point. <laughs> but uh that was the my first foray into meeting these people. So they were like you know, real flesh and blood like people behind the the names in the comic books. So they they were like real. So uh the next year I went um um actually it was 69 when I think I went on my own. I went there by myself. And um, so uh, then I met some more people who I met was uh, Frank Frazetta. Everyone knows who Frank Frazetta is, like the world's greatest like fantasy artist. And uh, so he had like a, a room set up with paintings, whatever. <laughs> and then uh, uh, <clears throat> so I was, I was like 60, 69, I was like 13, 14, whatever. He goes, hey, kid. He goes, listen, I need, okay, you want to hear, watch my paintings for a little bit? I've got to go out. I said, sure. And I was like, all right. Hey, Frank for that. So I kind of hung out with him for a couple of hours. And he was going to do me, then later he said, he was going to do a sketch for me, right? He goes, I'll do a sketch for you because you, you were helping out. And his wife comes like, no, no. Yeah. Ellie, no, you can't do a sketch for him. What are you crazy, Frank? You know, because you know, she was selling sketches for him, whatever mm -hmm. it was. So what he ended up doing was, and I still have it, I was, had my artwork that I was showing artists. So I showed him my artwork. So he went and he signed my artwork on the top. Frank Fazetta, this big, 
Frank Frazetta, you know, like a really. That's awesome. So I have it framed at home, you know, Frank Frazetta, you know. But he goes, I'm sorry, you won't let me do a drawing, you know. Uh, so unfortunately, but he was a very nice guy. He was, he was another Brooklyn guy, another New York guy, so. Um, <clears throat> Did you cut the name out, or is it still attached to your artwork? No, it's still attached to your artwork. Oh, okay. No, it's like you know, it's a, it's a whole whole thing the whole there. Thing, yeah. The whole the thing. Story, yeah. The whole story. There's a story behind it. So when's your memoir coming out? Uh, I don't know. Actually, Joe Sinis said I should write a book, but <laughs> yes. but uh, um, uh, so see, how did I start in the comic business? Right. So then, so I, w I would go to these comic conventions, you know, every year. This, this is the July Fourth one. Okay, so then. This is around the time I'm freshman in high school, whatever. And uh, one of the uh, who I meet in high school this freshman year is uh, a guy you may have heard of if you if you read kind of George Perez, the George Perez, yeah, awesome. Teen Titans, you know all that stuff. But but he, you know, we were both in high, so we were like the two like comic book nerds in the school, Cardinal Hayes High School in the Bronx, Catholic High School. Okay like military school so of course naturally we gravitated to each other and we were like drawing stuff but he was like like way better than me i mean <clears throat> even at that time he was almost like as good as he was when he was drawing comics but we did stuff together so i my character astron star soldier were you guys altar boys or no 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 no, 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 no. We, we didn't go for that. We 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 we, we, we both didn't, didn't didn't go for the, the whole mass thing. We weren't like into that at all. We're, but uh, um, uh, but in any case, so the first Astron story which we did in high school, I wrote it and drew it, and he inked it. And it was funny. We used to get these pads of paper, eight and a half by eleven paper, at Woolworths, and then we had flare pens. And this is what we did the first couple of things with. So naturally, we didn't print this. It was just, you know, stapled it together. Um, over the years, I've lost most of it, but I found the final page, which I have put up on Facebook <coughs> uh, with, the, with George um, inking it. So it's, and then later on, we we did some fanzines. Well, actually, before that, I brought him to his first Comic-Con, I think the next year. I think it was uh, in 70. So I, I brought him to the New York Comic Con, mm -hmm. and uh, and then I, I tried to I tried to be his agent. So we, we went to to some met some guys who were who were doing uh, fanzines. Uh, um, uh, Paul Levitz, he was like thirteen, and Paul really? Levitz, Paul <laughs> Levitz said, "Oh, I have a friend of mine who's doing a fanzine, and this is a friend, Jim Glenn, who goes by the name T.J. Glenn. He's an actor now." I'm still friends you with him. You guys heard of Paul Levitz, right? He did like Paul Levitz, the publisher of DC Comics. Like just a mm -hmm. resident but at the writer. time, he was doing a fanzine called The Comic Reader. So, yeah. so, uh, um, so, so he introduced us to, to uh, Jim Glenn. And Jim Glenn was doing a fanzine called Factors Unknown. Mm -hmm. So the first uh, <clears throat> comic strip we did, I, I ended up uh, writing it. It was called Stranded. It was like a a faux EC comic science fiction story about an astronaut stranded on this planet and he meets like a, this beautiful girl, this, this hot, sexy chick, you know, and uh, then uh, she turns out to be a monster and like kills him. And it was like, yeah. it was <laughs> like, like very like original, very original. <laughs> you know, but I, uh, but, but on that one, George penciled it, I inked it. So that was actually his first printed work. Factors Unknown number two. The next year, in fact, there's a gnome number three, which is uh, which people sell for like a couple hundred dollars on on eBay. Um, that one, I did a comic strip, which was kind of like a, a, a fake Thunderbirds. Remember the TV show Thunderbirds, but mm -hmm. Thunderbirds are go. So it was kind of like uh, with the little puppets. Well, I did kind of a, a thing, a knockoff of that, you know, uh, called Three Hundred Fathoms Down or something. And it was about it. some some plane crashing and these guys rescue it you know so i i penciled it george inked it and then he did a, another story called uh, um, uh death squad which was kind of like almost like uh kind of teen titans and doom patrol yeah, put yeah. together 
but the artwork was like, you know, if you look at it now, it's like, you can see it's like, wow, this stuff is, uh, you know, suicide, gorgeous, yeah. you know. Uh, but uh, before the Suicide Squad, right. Um, <clears throat> well, so what inspired you? What, what, where'd you get these ideas from to just, just our, our psychotic minds you know, watching TV? You know, we... <laughs>